In this video, we will prove this amazing and amazingly important property in the special case when A is an elementary matrix. Then in the next video, we will make the jump to arbitrary matrices. In an earlier video, we used this property in combination with elementary matrices to rediscover the effect of row operations on the determinant. So now it's time to go back to where we were logically previously. That is, this identity is not yet available and is to be proved. Meanwhile, we know all about the effect of row operations on the determinant. So let us now show, or rather simply observe, that this identity holds when A is each kind of elementary matrix. It's really all right in front of us. We just have to say it. Let's start with this kind of elementary matrix, a triangular matrix with ones on the diagonal and a single non-zero entry off the diagonal. On the left-hand side, we have the determinant of this product, which equals the determinant of B, because the effect of this matrix on B is to add a multiple of one row to another, which leaves the determinant unchanged. So on the left-hand side, we simply have the determinant of B. On the right-hand side, we have the product of the determinant of A, which equals 1 because A is a triangular matrix with 1s in the diagonal, and the determinant of B. So the right-hand side also equals the determinant of B. So we see that this identity holds, because both sides equal the determinant of B, when A is this kind of elementary matrix. Now let's move on to this kind of elementary matrix, a single switch away from the identity. On the left-hand side, we have the determinant of this product, which equals minus the determinant of B, because the effect of this matrix on B is to switch two of its rows, which changes the sign of the determinant. So on the left-hand side, we have minus the determinant of B. On the right-hand side, we have the determinant of A, which equals minus 1, because this matrix is a single row switch away from the identity, times the determinant of B. So on the right-hand side, we also have minus the determinant of B, and once again we see that this identity holds when A is this kind of elementary matrix. And finally, let's move on to this kind of elementary matrix which pretty much equals the identity matrix, except for one entry on the diagonal that doesn't equal 1. On the left-hand side, we have the determinant of this product, which equals that number times the determinant of B, because the effect of this matrix on B is to multiply one of its rows by that number, which multiplies the determinant by that number. So on the left-hand side, we have that number, times the determinant of B. On the right-hand side, we have the determinant of A, which equals the product of the diagonal entries, in other words, it equals that number, times the determinant on, of B. So on both sides, we have that number times the determinant of B. And we once again see that this identity holds when A is this kind of elementary matrix. So this shows that this identity holds when A is any kind of elementary matrix. The only thing that's left is to jump, and not even jump, to take a hop from elementary matrices to general matrices. And that's exactly what we're going to do in the next video by remembering that any matrix can be represented as a product of elementary matrices.